Hello YouTube and welcome to Heathen Hacks. Today we are going to briefly talk about row column scanning and make an 8x8 LED matrix while we're at it because why not? By the way, you can also just use a pre-built LED matrix if you have one. And as always, all the necessary links will be provided on the description down below. Let's go! So what is row column scanning you ask? Well, row column scanning is somewhat similar to switch access scanning. Okay, but what does that mean? Switch access scanning is an indirect selection technique or access method. Unlike direct selection, typing on a keyboard, touching a screen, a scanner can only make selections when the scanning indicator aka LEDs or cursor of the electronic device is on the desired choice. The scanning indicator moves through items aka LEDs by highlighting or turning on each item or LED on the screen aka PCB, i.e. visual scanning, or by announcing each item via voice output, i.e. auditory scanning, and then the user activates a switch to select the item. Thanks, Wikipedia. The only difference is, in this particular row column scanning method, we won't use any switches or voice output or input. And, according to Arduino.cc, to control a matrix, you connect both its rows and columns to your microcontroller. The columns are connected to the LED's cathodes, so a column needs to be low for any of the LED's in that column to turn on. The rows are connected to the LED's anodes, so the row needs to be high for an individual LED to turn on. If the row and the column are both high or both low, no voltage flows through the LED and the LED does not turn on. To control an individual LED, you set its column low and its row high. To control multiple LEDs in a row, you set the row high, then take the column and set the columns low or high as appropriate. A low column will turn the corresponding LED on, and the high column will turn it off. This information is from the Arduino.cc website. Yes, I ripped off another tutorial. Here are the things that we need, a solderless breadboard, a blank PCB, 64 LEDs, some standoffs, optional of course, flushed wire cutters, a needle nose or vice grip long nose pliers, some soldering stuff, an Arduino Uno board of course, some hookup wires, jumper cables, and lastly, two pieces of 10k potentiometers. So after rigorously checking if all LEDs are working just to finish this thing, let's proceed with soldering. <coughs> Wait, what just happened? After soldering the columns, we need to do some tests in order for us to make sure that all the LEDs are still working as intended. Because we would have a bad time desoldering stuff if some LEDs turned out to be broken and the matrix is already done. Alright, set the multimeter to continuity mode and connect the ground probe to the cathodes of the LED. Then proceed on to the test. Just slide the positive probe of the multimeter across the anode pins of the LEDs like this. Now that we're sure that the first column is okay, let's solder the second column then repeat the process. After soldering the columns of the LEDs, let's proceed on the rows. 
Make sure to leave a gap between the anodes and cathodes of the LEDs like this. To do that, I will use some round barbecue sticks to act as spacers. And just like that, we're done! Now, to check the connections, it's time to use the continuity function of the multimeter again. Okay, after checking, we need to solder some wires to the leads of the LEDs and connect the other end of the wires to some female headers on a small PCB. Just finish the rows, next are the columns. Just like this. Then connect the wires to the female headers. Like this. And this. After that, let's do another continuity test just to make sure that all our connections are okay. I connected mine like this. I used 8 pieces of 100 ohm resistors for this one by the way. I got the value by using an LED resistor calculator website, link in the description. Just enter the voltage source which is 5 volts, voltage drop which is 3.5 volts and current which is 20 milliamps. I actually got 75 ohms, but 100 ohms is the closest bigger valued resistor that I have. Okay, so this is column 1 of the matrix and this is row 1. The rows are connected to the anodes and the columns are connected to the cathodes. Now, let's connect the matrix to the Arduino. I just followed this one. Again, link in the description. So, row 5 is to pin 13, row 7 to pin 12 and so on. After that, we need to connect the 10K potentiometers. These are from circuit rocks by the way. And again, just like the schematic diagram, all the necessary links will be available on the description down below. Now, just to make sure that the potentiometers are both working, let's open up the IDE. Then, click on File, Examples, Basics, then Analog Read Serial. The example is set to read serial data from analog pin 0 or the first potentiometer. Then, connect the Arduino to the computer. Also, make sure that the correct port is selected. Mine is COM7. Then, click on Upload. Tools. And click on Serial Monitor. Okay, it looks like the value is changing while I turn the knob to the left or to the right. So, we know that the first one is working. For the second potentiometer, copy and paste this line, and add some numbers to the names to differentiate one from the other. Then, change A0 to A1, so that sensor value 2 would read the value from the second potentiometer which is connected to analog pin 1. Copy and paste this one also and add numbers to the names so that serial monitor would print both values from both potentiometers. Just like that. Now that we know that both of our potentiometers are working, let's get the code from the row column scanning tutorial on arduino.cc. Alternatively, we could just click on File, Examples, Displays, then click on Row Column Scanning. Alright, let's plug in the Arduino. As you can see here, whenever I turn the potentiometer knobs to the left or right, the LED moves with it. And that's about it really. Oh. Thanks for watching and see you again next week. Maybe. <laughs>